start time. We're logging that start time, perfect. We log the stop, stop time and we got the duration. Hey, so in this video, we're gonna create a stopwatch inside of a Google Sheet. We have a completely blank sheet here. We are gonna use Apps Script a little bit, so hang on, I'll show you all the coding involved here. So you might be wondering, what is a stopwatch in a Google Sheet? It is a way to keep time and track duration of time. So we're gonna have a button, we're gonna create a button out of a checkbox. We're going to click that button, log the time with a timestamp, then click the button again, log the time, and then calculate that duration immediately, and then keep track of all the times we start and stop that stop one. And I'm also going to show you step-by-step step how to do this. We're gonna start from a blank sheet. We're gonna have no app script written. We're gonna use the on edit simple trigger, which is built into Google Sheets. It's really interesting, and I'm gonna show you every single step. Hang on. So before we get to coding, though, let's go back to our sheet and create a button. Not just any button, we're gonna create a button with a checkbox. We're gonna insert a checkbox here. We're not gonna just do that. We are going to make it 200 size. We're gonna bring our box back down to resize row. Let's do 30, and then let's make this an actual box. We're gonna resize this column, 30. So we have this clicker here. So what this is doing, this is changing from true to false. And what we're trying to do is we need something to change when we click something. And the checkbox does that. When you click it, it changes from true to false or false to true. We want to, let's actually make this a little bit uh, wider here. We're going to write start right here. We are going to change this eventually. So we got this centered. We got a checkbox here, but we can see that this is changing, right? One way we can do this is let's create, let's just make it all black. And if we just make both the background and the text the same color, it doesn't work. It gives you this heads up. So what we need to do is select it and then change one of these just a little tiny bit. So we're going to change it to 02. Now, when we click it, it does not give us a message and you can't see the change, right? So this is going true, false, true, false every time we click it. Great. All right, now what do we do in our function, in our app script? We are creating a stopwatch here. And what we need to do, we need to use the on edit. Okay, but what do we need the on edit to be? We need an event. We need if, actually we need e variable sheet equals E dot source, I think. So we have E dot source get active sheet. We actually want the sheet name that it's on. So sheet dot get, I think we need get name, but we can log this logger dot log sheet name. Now, if we go to our box here, click this true false, then go to executions. See, we have some completed and we should in a moment be able to see if this is the sheet name. Now I'm showing you this because this is a really easy way to figure out if you're doing anything right. It's just to look at this log stuff. Let's keep looking, let's refresh it. Sheet one, that is the name of our sheet. Perfect. So now that we got the name of the sheet, we can say, hey, is the edit that we're editing on, is this edit actually on sheet one? And if it is, then let's log it. If we also actually need variable sheet, no, edit range, is it gonna be equal e dot range? Now we want, range. Now we don't want edit range. <laughs> this is, this autocomplete is, ah, this autocomplete is killing me. Escape. Okay. Now logger.log edit range, but we want to log something else here because what we need to do is we need sheet name to equal sheet one and two ampersands. We need edit row equals one. We also need, no, we don't, it's not one, it's two because it's a second row. And edit column, which will create another variable there, that needs to equal one. That means A2, right? So row two, column one, we need to make sure that is set. And if that is, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, hey, create this, get a timestamp. We're gonna do variable time equals new date. That's going to be our timestamp. We're going to timestamp somewhere. We're probably going to just create a row here before, probably at, yeah, before something. We'll insert a row. So we need to do variable sheet. So yes, equals spreadsheet app. We'll always do spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. We need to do variable sheet equals 
It says dot get sheet by name. We need sheet one. We want to do variable range, add range, I think. No, we don't need that. We just need to do sheet dot insert. I think we do something like this. Okay, we need sheet, which is sheet one, insert rows before the fourth row. So we're gonna go over to the fourth row. We're gonna insert a row right before that. So we're gonna say start and then stop. We also, if this says start, we wanna change it to stop. And if it says stop, we want it to change to start. We wanna do that by going to do a1 equals ss, no, sheet dot, sheet dot range. We want the range, whoops, to be a1. And then a1 dot set value. Yep. And then we want start if it says stop. So here we got to put right here if go ss dot get sheet by name. Oh, should we have sheet? Probably want to change this to like something like sheet one, I think. Not just sheet. That might work better. Let's move this actually. We need this here. Value equals a1 dot get value. That's how we get the exact value of that. So we can even log this as well. You can see this logger dot log a1 value and we can log it. But if, if a1 value is equal to start, we want to do something here. And if same thing, we'll get to this in a second. If it's a stop, we'll do something else. So if it's start, then we want to do a one dot set value to stop. And if it's stop, we want to do exactly the same thing, except change it to start. So every time we click that button, that the cell above will edit. So we can see if this edit row, we can add this edit range is e.range, then row should be at e.range.row. We can also log this, logger.log, just to double check this is going okay, whatever that is. And then we can also log this edit column, which is the event e range.column. Again, we can log this just in case, in case it's not correct. Sometimes this syntax is a bit hard to remember. So just make remember to do logger.log. We can save this, try clicking a couple times, and then go to our act our executions and let's see if this is correct we'll click refresh just wait here for a moment there we go we got null great so we have it wrong but it is getting something okay we're logging something but we're getting the wrong thing here i think it's git might be get row there we go so now we have it correct we are clicking on this checkbox we are getting completed a correctly completed event here and we are correctly grabbing the range and then also edit row. Whatever row is being edited. Now, what's really cool is you can go edit something else. We can edit here, add some difference, or let's do time. And we can go back to our executions. This is a little sideways thing. We can see here this was correct. This was the last one. There we go. Oh, there actually was this one. And see, our first one was four, so that's the row. Nope, not there, but there. Sorry, column. I think we have to refresh this to get both of them. There we go. The row was the first one, three, and the column was the second one, four. So now we're logging all, not logging, but we can log that whenever it happens. But cool thing is making sure that only if the sheet that we're editing is called sheet one, making sure that the edit row that we're editing is the second row and the column is one, so that A, A2. And then once that happens, we're going to be changing this from start to stop. I think we can do that. There you go. That A1 is starting. So now it labels it, hey, click here to stop or click here to start. But now what we need to do is put in it. And if we notice, actually, we can probably go down the bottom. It, we have been adding the rows. We just haven't really noticed because we didn't have data in there. All right. How do we add the row? Or we, sorry, we add the row. Now we want to put in some data. We want the time, right? If it's, okay, so if it's start, that means we're stopping. And we want to put, we want to put it in the second place. But first, let's do the first one. Wait, if it's start, <laughs> we're starting. So we go, where was that time? Okay, we need to add time somewhere. We need spreadsheet app. Let's just do this. Spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. We'll do all, get sheet by name. We have it actually here. We can just do sheet one. Sheet one 
dot get range is going to be row four, column two, two, set value, and the value is going to be time. So let's look at that. Let's see. Start. There we go. We got the time. We can even format this. Actually, that's the entire timestamp. We can do date time. Perfect. Now, when we want to do stop, we actually want it in the other place, but we don't want to insert the row yet. We only want to insert the row when it's start. So let's do that there. And then we don't insert a row when it's stop, but we do set the value time. So we just move the cursor or the range to three. Great. So now if I click it, it should only put it in C4. Perfect. Let's format this number to date time. And we can also format all, actually we don't even need all of that. We can just delete all of that. So now we have a time. This is going to always be C1 minus B4, not C1, C4. So we can do equals C4 minus B4. We can format this number to a duration. We can click start. And you see we don't have the time yet. So maybe we want to put this fun or formula in time when we have a stop time. So we'll also add here. Let's go do exactly this except the column four. And instead of set value, we're going to set formula. And this formula we're going to set up is going to be C4 minus B4. And let's see how this goes. Okay. Boop. We got it here. We got it here. Now we're going to start a new one. Start time. We're logging that start time. Perfect. We log the stop, stop time and we got the duration. And all of these also change as they go down. These formulas will change, right? So we don't need to change this formula. This is awesome, right? We could also hard code this. We could just do the math, right? We can take the, this and minus this and put it here. That's another way to do it. But now we have a stopwatch inside of a Google Sheet. We can have a start time, stop time, and the duration of those in between. Isn't that pretty cool? I hope you enjoyed that step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create that stopwatch inside of Google Sheets. If you're looking for the sheet and you just want to copy the sheet, become a Better Sheets member today, bettersheets.co. You can become a free member, a monthly member, or buy a lifetime deal and get every single sheet I ever create. Or go watch this video where I create a ChatGPT clone inside of a Google Sheet or check out any one of these videos where I improve sheets. Maybe you're not looking to do something from scratch, but you're just looking to improve your own sheet. Watch how I improve other people's sheets here in this playlist.